Hey everybody, I'm Mike Avila with Sci-Fi Wire and today I'm sitting down with comics legend George Perez. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for pronouncing my name right too. I appreciate it. <laughs> First of all, let me ask you, how are you feeling? Much better now. Obviously, I've had a, f a few health issues and a couple of health scares, but hanging in there and uh, there's nothing else taking care of myself because there are too many people uh, who seem to really want me to stay around. Good. Um, as one of your many fans, I'm sure we're, we're all very happy to hear that. You know, when you took over the book, a, a lot of people probably don't remember this or are too young to, to realize this, but she was really a second tier character at the time for DC in a lot of ways. Um, wasn't selling great. Um, a lot of people suggested that they kept on publishing the book despite the little sales just to maintain the, the publishing rights to it. And then you came on board and that changed quickly. Could you, take me back to the pitch that you gave DC for taking over the book. And how, how did you sell them on you, George Perez, coming on and writing and drawing that book? Well, actually, it wasn't really a hard sell. They were already committed to having Wonder Woman... Uh, get a reboot after the Crisis on Infinite Earth series. I did have a specific Wonder Woman story I wanted to do, but when they decided to devolve the character, I thought that's uh, a story that I would never get to do. And um, it wasn't until they were planning on doing the new Wonder Woman series, and I would visit the offices at DC Comics, and Janice Race, who was the editor at the time of uh, the Wonder Woman series, didn't seem to be happy with the direction they were going to be going. Almost like they had to print the book. It wasn't a book that a lot of people seemed to be volunteering for. In fact, it, at that point, Wonder Woman was always an assigned book. No one volunteered to do Wonder Woman for the reasons you stated. And I was listening to the pitch and seeing that almost every female worker at DC was not particularly happy with the direction they were going to be going. And I was thinking of what was going on at DC since the Crisis on Infinite Earth series of what was being done with Superman, what was being done with Batman. And I always felt that, you know, that she was, as far as recognition, on a par with them. You know, most people would know Wonder Woman by name, uh, and of course, with, uh, with the television series Absolutely. as well. And since I did have that one story in mind, I asked, if you gave me enough time so I can develop from the beginning, would you want me to take over on, on doing Wonder Woman? That was all I had to ask. Because I was coming off the Teen Titans and Crisis. I was at the height of my uh, popularity and my marketability. So to uh, volunteer to take over of all books, Wonder Woman, when I could have had my pick of anything, um, I had, that was all the sale I, salesmanship I needed. I, I find it interesting you mentioned that a lot of the female staffers that weren't happy with the direction of the book. Because I thought one of the things that is finally remembered about your run on Wonder Woman is the strong female characters you developed. Not just uh, with, with, with Diana, but also with the villains. Cheetah, uh, Decay, Silver Swan. Y you introduced and you re reinvigorated many female characters in the mythos. Plus, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was, uh, and this was a, again a change from the original concept, was that when Wonder Woman came to Patriarch's world for the first time, that she had a strong female guide. So I, I developed the, the Boston uh, professor, uh, uh, Julia Capitellis, and gave her a young daughter so someone could actually see Diana from a youngster's point of view. So I, yes, I was trying very hard uh, to give her a strong female-centric base with, of course, uh, not uh, ignoring Steve Trevor and other male mm -hmm. characters that I had two great, great compliments I had well, when people read my book. One woman who was reading my Wonder Woman for the first time and was surprised it was written by a man. And one, it was a female writer who said this, who knew my work. She said when she read it, she was surprised it was written by a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of those compliments. The, the character, even more so than Superman and Batman, the other parts of DC's Trinity, She's an inspiration. She's a symbol to, you know, to, to women. Um, does, does the character being such a, a unique presentation uh, rep and representation, does it make it harder to create stories for, in a oh, way? Well, like, it's like any character or any role model, no matter whether it's fictional or real, trying to live up to it is always a tough one, particularly it gives a, a burden of responsibility that sometimes you can't 
let dictate the story. Um, that even though she's an icon, she's an inspiration, she's also uh, human, she's flawed, and she, she will make mistakes. She will, you know, sometimes act uh, with her heart, not her head, or uh, make mistakes because she doesn't understand things, but is willing to learn. The uh, emphasis on her heroism being, you know, a person who will fight through her fears, and if she makes a mistake, will learn from them and, ca and carry on as a, as a wiser person. Thank you very much. This Thank you, Mike. Thank you.